Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Akiba Rubinstein Saga. Today I would like to show you the game from round 3 of Ostend the 1906 tournament and Akiba Rubinstein at that time, uh, his ranking 2638 according to the chess metrics and he's gonna play as black. And at that time he was only 23 years old and this was one of his first uh, big tournaments, okay? Uh, and his opponent Frank Marshall from USA, one of the strongest chess players in the world of that time. He was already very experienced and very strong attacking player. He was 28 years old and he was considered uh, to be number four in the world with the ranking 2737. And he's gonna play as white. So definitely uh, Frank Marshall is the favorite um, of this game. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. We have d4 by Frank Marshall and Rubinstein open with d5, c4, e6, knight c3, knight f6, king's gambit declined, bishop g5, knight b on d7, and now e3. And it's worth it to say that uh, in this position, actually, there is a trap. There are not many uh, traps in the Queen's Gambit decline, so uh, it's always good to know this one. Uh, so if white takes actually on d5 with the knight, then it looks everything pretty okay, because this knight is pinned, okay? Uh, the queen uh, is on this the same diagonal with the knight. But actually, black can take this knight and win the minor piece. After losing the queen, we have bishop on b4 and it's called elephant trap. So queen on d2, just taking up the, the queen and of course the bishop on d8. And if you count uh, the pieces, black has extra knight. So um, definitely for the pawn. So definitely uh, should be very comfortable game and probably should be easy win. Of course, Frank Marshall not gonna fall into the trap like this one. Uh, this is why he play e3. We have bishop on e7, Queen on c2, castle, knight on f3, and it's interesting that this variation is called uh, nowadays in the in the theory Rubinstein variation. Okay, so Rubinstein has to face uh, his system with the queen on c2. We have rook on e8 by Rubinstein and bishop on d3. So Frank Marshall don't wait with the you know rook on c1 and other moves. Uh, he knows that uh, he has to move the bishop anyway, so he do it now. Bishop on d3, we have d takes on c4, bishop takes on c4, and now a6. Uh, preparing b5. Frank Marshall don't like this idea, so he play a4. Uh, and here Rubinstein attack the center with c5. We have castle by Frank Marshall, and now b6. Uh, c takes on d4, it's also possible, uh, and that would be, you know, very equal game with uh, a symmetrical position, symmetrical pawn structure, so a very very drawish. Uh, so this is why Rubinstein prefers something like b6. And okay, uh, Frank Marshall continue with rook f on d1. We have bishop on b7 as planned, d takes on c5, and here queen on c7, queen on c7, so uh, not taking c5 pawn, because now this pawn actually is pinned. Uh, if the pawn attack b6, then white gonna lose the bishop. Uh, and now white can play something like b4. This is considered as the strongest move, uh, b4 for example, and after bishop takes on f3, g takes on f3, b takes on c5, b5, okay? And after exchanging, uh, white has quite active position and that could be probably very interesting with the semi-open g-file. Uh, so that could be good position for uh, attacking style of Frank Marshall. However, he prefers to move the bishop on d3. And here Rubinstein has to make very, very important decision. Uh, what to play now? The best move for him is queen on c5 or knight on c5. And queen on c5 looks like very, very safe move. But Rubinstein playing against so strong opponent like Frank Marshall, he decide for the very, very risky and creative knight on c5. 
And what's the problem here? Frank Marshall takes on f6 and now h7 uh, is undefended. And this was uh, intentionally uh, because Akiba Rubinstein has the plan here. So after g takes on f6, we have bishop on h7 and now king on g7. And now look at Akiba Rubinstein position of the king. King is it can be in the troubles, so he had to calculate very precisely, but also he gonna have advantage with the open H and G files. So this can be very, very interesting game. And what Frank Marshall can play here. So according to the engine, the best move for him is B4. B4 kicking the knight first. And of course, black can play something like bishop on f3. It's recommended actually by the engine, but it doesn't look good because white's gonna have the open file and a very easy attack on the king. So um, probably good for engine, uh, but not for human. So knight on d7 would have to be played and then bishop on e4 is possible. Uh, and then after exchanging the bishops in the center, this knight is hanging, so uh, black can take it, but now this knight is hanging also. Of course, it can't be taken now because of the, of the rook on a1, so first rook a on c1, queen on b4, exchanging the queens, and only now takes this, um, this knight. And it looks like white have quite nice advantage, but after rook a on c8, white not gonna uh, you know double the rooks on the seven rank so they would have to play something like rook c on c7 uh, exchange the rooks and the position is considered to be equal because white have this passed pawn but black also gonna have a uh, passed pawn on his own so that's gonna be uh, probably very easy draw also a bishop on d3 looks quite okay and safe and after rook on h8 uh, black would have the tension here on this um, h2 uh, and white would play for probably something like knight on e4 uh, and after f5 uh, taking of course is impossible because the the queen is hanging so uh, after f5 just knight on g3 and everything is fine and both sides can try to you know continue uh, white can actually probably attack the king king is uh, quite vulnerable but remember that these two semi open files uh, are also some advantage for black so these are two lines, uh, pretty okay for Frank Marshall, b4 or bishop on d3. However, uh, he was named Frank Marshall and he was number four in the world because of his attacking abilities and he play rook on d4 and rook on d4 looks very, very strong. However, is quite a miscalculation by Frank Marshall. Uh, we have rook on h8 by Rubinstein, so now threatening to take the bishop and now rook on g4, uh, checking the king, king have to be moved to f8 and now now rook on g3 very nice defending move so now you know h2 is not in the danger and now bishop can be moved however akiba rubinstein set up the trap and he play f5 so now the bishop actually is trapped i'm not sure if frank marshall calculated it correctly uh, but after bishop takes on f5 he takes on f5 queen on f5 it looks like he gonna have some sort of attack but believe me or not, but there is nothing for white here and they are actually, you know, uh, down the piece. Okay, they have three pawns for this piece, but it's still not enough. Uh, Akiba Rubinstein here probably could play something like queen on c6 and exchange uh, on f6. That would be uh, probably slightly better, but he play queen on d7. Queen on the seven, uh, of course, with the plan of exchanging most of his pieces. And Frank Marshall uh, don't need to accept that, uh, but then he would have to put his queen in maybe a little more passive uh, position. And he could play queen on e5. And after rook on g8, rook on d1, then queen e6, and he would have to exchange the queens or move the queen on h5. This is also possible, rook d8, 
and exchange the rooks and probably this position could be played but black can easily exchange the rooks and then the the rest of the pieces even the queens there are some weakness on the on the first rank uh so not really sure if this is the good uh, option for frank marshall but exchanging immediately uh probably also not good but okay uh, i'm not here to judge frank marshall of course he was number four in the world so he should know what he is doing he exchanged the queens so we have queen on d7 knight on d7 and now rook on d1 activate the last uh, piece we have rook on d8 following uh, with the rook and knight on d4 now so now this knight can be taken and now we have knight on c5 so going back to this very nice uh, outpost on c5 uh, we have b4 so frank marshall don't like this this knight here and we have knight on e6 asking white to exchange even more pieces and frank marshall exchange so we have knight on e6 now f takes on e6 rook on d8 uh, bishop takes on d8 and here frank marshall play rook on g4 so he let rubinstein exchange even more pieces because after rook on h5 uh white can't just move the the rook because they would lose the b4 pawn so that would be you know total annihilation so rook takes on h4 bishop takes on h4 and check what do we have here we have pair of bishop for rubinstein and what get white only the slow knight and three pawns and that's definitely not enough to win uh, but frank marshall try to continue and he play b5 we have a5 now f3 and now king on e7 we have e4 so uh, creating this uh, solid pawn chain and now king on d6 so uh, moving the king uh, straight to a4 uh, and here if white tries something like king on f1 uh, then we would have king on c5 king on e2 king on b4 and yes white can arrive on time to d3 and save the knight the problem is bishop on f6 attacking the knight and knight uh, have to be moved so knight d1 and the king can take on a4 uh, king c4 so locking the king um, in this cave let's say uh, and now bishop on c5 of course with the plan uh, picking up this b5 pawn uh, we could have uh, g3 let's say uh, activate all these pawns uh, bishop on d7 and knight on c3 kicking the king but king of course don't need to be moved because bishop on f6 uh, can take the knight uh, king on c3 king b5 and this actually is winning uh, easy winning for black so for example um, f4 king on c5 now g4 b5 uh, g5 b4 with check king c2 a4 g6 now bishop on c6 threatening to take the pawn with check and then move the bishop uh, on h7 so king on d3 but now bishop on e8 g7 bishop on f7 and bishop can stop um, the progress so white would have to uh, use another pawn h4 but it's just too slow a3 uh, king on c2 now king c4 h5 b3 with check king b1 now uh, king on c3 h6 a2 with check king a1 and now very strong move e5 e5 defending this diagonal so defending a2 checkmate is coming so nothing can be done here h7 and almost queening here but b2 is a checkmate this is why frank marshall try uh, g3 we have bishop on f6 knight on a2 and now bishop on b2 and now this knight is trapped this bishop controls everything and also the pawn uh, controls b4 so the knight can't move and here we have h4 the last try by frank marshall uh, we have e5 uh, locking the center and now h5 we have king on e7 uh, king on g2 now a bishop on c8 f4 bishop on e6 attacking the knight and of course winning the knight knight on b4 a takes on b4 and now f5 
attacking the bishop, bishop on g8, so uh, now bishop can stop the advance of the pawns, and now a5, we have b takes on a5, and it looks like Frank Marshall gonna, you know, advance with the b6 pawn, so b6, but now of course bishop on d4, we have b7, and after bishop on a7, Frank Marshall resign the game. And he resigned because uh, nothing can be done. This pawn not gonna advance, this pawn's not gonna advance as well. The king is here, the bishop is here, but this pawn's gonna advance, so definitely easy win for Akiba Rubinstein. Okay, so this was first encounter uh, between Frank Marshall and Akiba Rubinstein. And Akiba Rubinstein got a very, very valuable win against very worthy, much stronger opponent. So congratulations to Akiba Rubinstein. And if you like this video, press a like. If for some reason you don't like this video, press unlike. And uh, press subscribe if you don't want to miss uh, other parts of Akiba Rubinstein saga. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.